Let's take a look at some of the other parts. Not everything in a model needs to get unwrapped, sent over to substance and painted. Sometimes just tiny little things require just to be, you know, a solid color because they're so small. Other times it's much easier to deal with them procedurally right in 3ds Max without having to, you know, uh, skip out to some other piece of software. Case in point is this patch cord. Now patch cord is the thing that goes from, in this case, the amp head uh, into the guitar body. Let's just take a look how I built it in the first place. Um, so what I started with is freehand spline and just scribbled a spline out in a circle here. I then built another piece that went up um, just separately and, and came down to it. Uh, on the freehand one, I used um, a, a spline relax. And if you look at this, it's, you know, my, my scribble was pretty darn wobbly. Um, so it just it just kind of, you know, cleaned up the original one. And the edit spline then attached this extra piece on. So it attached this into it. Normalized spline allowed me to be able to add more uh, knots into it. So if you take a look at this um, in wireframe, you can see there's all these knots in the spline and they're all evenly spaced and there's more of them. So normalized spline allowed me to be able to control that. And you can see as I dial it up and down, I can increase or decrease the amount. So this is based on the length of the segment. So smaller this gets, the closer those knots get together. Okay. And of course, the more geometry it's making um, in each one of these. Now, the spline overlap is a great modifier because it then detects these and makes it look like it all overlaps. So you can, uh, you know, determine the thickness. So basically, how high it gets over the top, and then you can, um, you know, also uh, deal with the drape, which is kind of like how soft it is. You know, whether or not it, it bends more or less. Um, so it's pretty darn handy uh, to be able to, uh, to to mess with that you know, and get something this simple. Um, the uh, plug on the end is actually on a path constraint. So I'm going to show you a problem with that in a second. So it's on a path constraint because this is technically still a path because you know, at no point in time do I have a, some sort of mesh modifier above. For instance, a sweep modifier would convert it to a mesh. So you could no longer actually put this on that path. Refer to my reference instance copy um, tutorial on how to do that, though, if you needed to. It's uh, really cool what you can do with, uh, with um, uh, references. So that's there. Now, you know, do we need to unwrap this? Because that would be a real pain in the butt, let me tell you. So we don't want to do that. But if we go down to freehand, you can see we can turn on generate mapping coordinates. That's effectively all we've got to do is just simply turn on generate mapping coordinates at the bottom. And at that point, it's been mapped. Let's just take a look and you'll see, you'll see immediately the, uh, the plug on the end vanishes when I do this because dropping an unwrap modifier on here automatically turns it to a mesh. And you can see that it vanished and it's actually sitting over here at 000 in the middle of world space um, because it no longer has a valid path to attach itself to. So I'm just gonna open this. So there's the unwrap. So it's perfectly unwrapped in a one-to-one -one UV space. Okay, you can see it's just jammed in there. So it's completely crammed from top to bottom. It should be a super long, thin strip effectively. Okay? Okay, so side to side is around it, and then top to bottom is the uh, along the length of it. Now we don't need this at all. Just delete it, and you'll see that that pops back because it becomes a you know valid again. I'm just going to open my material editor, and I'll just make my modify panel smaller so we can see here. And uh, I think that's clear this one. So I'm going to go to add a physical material here, and we're just going to apply it, hit A, and it'll apply it to the selection. And then we're going to pull out of the base color OSL uh, textures, and we're going to go to weave, and we're going to plug the color value in. So now you can see it's stretched along the length. I don't know if you can see that, but it's completely stretched along it. I'm going to take the bendiness down to zero. I'm going to take the... Um, uh, where is it again? There's another one here. Weave, you know, frizz, bendiness. I think there might be something else I'll take down in a minute. But if you look at this, you can see there's lots of gaps. That's the width. I'm going to push that up until it, um, you know, looks a little better. It has, uh, you know, a little less space in between them. 
and we'll play with the color later. There's the scale of it, but the scale is the overall scale. It'll scale it up and down. So if I increase the scale, you'll see that you know it it zooms it in sort of thing. If I take it down to 0 0.01, it's going to go in, make it more, but it's doing it in both axes. So it's not what we're actually after. I'm just going to go back to 0 0.2. And in the uh, physical two, um, I really should have my roughness turned up, maybe a seven, eight, somewhere there. And uh, so it's it's rougher looking. So in the UVs, we can uh, go in and we can scale this on individual axis. So going into the UV input of it, I'm going to go to OSL, um, UVW coordinates, transform, and we can play with the UV transform. So if I take this transform and, for instance, I scale it along the Y, um, you'll notice I can now scale along the length of it. Maybe give it two around for the current, you know, based on the current scale here. And you'll see that it goes around. So to make it go around properly, these have to be whole numbers or else you'll see the seam. Um, but now you won't see the seam because it should fit together. There's no seam going around it right now because it tiles perfectly around it. And of course, now I can see that 500 is not long enough here. I'm going to hold down control while I scale it, and I can scale it um, and bring it into size along that length. Now, this generally isn't how these cords are done. They're usually done on a 45 degree angle. So I'm just going to scale this up till it, it kind of gives me what I'm looking for. Maybe I've gone a little too far now. I'm also going to plug in the bump so a bump can just go right into the bump. And, you know, so it's going to start looking bumpy on us. We can play with the amount of bump and everything. Uh, you can, you know, there's even settings in the weave for that. So there's roundness of the bump and the shadow sort of being drawn on it, you know, so we can play around with those values too. So to get it to go on an angle, what we're actually going to need is two of these. Because if I just rotate it with this one and take it to a 45 degree angle, it's not going to make much sense because, you know, this is not scaled uniformly. So it's not that's not going to work. So we're going to need two of these. And we're going to actually need this one first. So the one that we've got the scale first. And I'm just going to shift drag that out. And I want to take the scale values back to 1-1. One, one. And I'm going to plug the one that's doing the scaling into the one that's going to do the rotation and that rotation back into the weave. And I want to take the rotation and turn it to 45 degrees. And there you go. Now you got a 45 degree angle cable wrapped around it. All you have to do now is just start playing with the, uh, the color values to be able to get the kind of color you're looking for. So I've gone with kind of a blues and yellow sort of color. So that's done. We really don't need to do anything else to this because it looks fine. You know, a lot of patch cords are literally just black plastic. And in that case, you might want to be texturing on some text somewhere. But are there other ways instead of texturing it onto it? Could you use little patches that are on path deforms along the length of it that stick to the surface effectively? That's another possibility to be able to uh, place that on there. And, uh, you know, that can certainly work. So we can look at that in the future as well. So there's all sorts of tricks that can be used. Now, around back, we've got all these other cables. We might consider some of these just to be black and really don't need anything else. But I'd probably always turn on the generate mapping coordinates just in case that I do need mapping coordinates. Now, this one is a little different. This is just cables, but they're done with um, a cylinder. So what I have then is this cylinder. And the cylinder has an array on it. So it's just arrayed out so that there's two of them. And it's using center. So it's um, you know centered and pushing it either way. You could make three or four of them really easily. You could do a radial one, however you want. I do a twist and then twist it up a bunch. Um, throw it some noise on it so it's just not quite even. And then I pass the form it along a path. And that's this path here that you can see. So adjusting this path and, you know, manipulating it will change what it's like. So if we want to unwrap this, that's pretty darn easy. All you got to do is make sure generate map coordinates is on. And it's on by default in this case. So it's already unwrapped along the length of each one of these. Now, once again, we have to run into the, uh, the idea that all of the unwraps would be, in this case, on both these, would be right on top of one another. And being right on top of one another, um, you know, we'd, we'd have sort of a, a 
you know, a, a problem with texturing them individually. But again, these are little cables in the background. You know, why don't we, you know, make these red and black, which you might often see, and just kind of make them shiny plastics and whatnot. You know, it's such a small element. You know, we could come back to it if we determine we need to fly in this close and we really want to see, you know, some variation along it. So here's a neat trick again. In the array modifier, if we go down, we'll have these material IDs. And you'll see that I've already set it up from one to two um, and it's random. So essentially what it's saying is, is that um, random or ordered, you know, going one after the other, you could say. Um, and the idea being is, is that there's going to be materials on these that we can apply red and black to. So I'm going to select all of those that I've done that way. And that's all of these here. And I'm going to pop open my material again. And let's just call this one patch cord. You'll notice, by the way, that I have um, the name showing in the uh, in here in the actual uh, scene explorer, and that's really handy uh, to be able to have. So I'm going to go down, and I'm just going to go materials, physical material here, and you know um, we're going to need two of those. I'm just going to close that with H. I'm just going to pull that one down, and this one is going to have a base color of black. And this one's going to have a base color of red. We'll leave the uh, shininess up right now. We can just pull these out then into the um, uh, multi-sub material and plug those in. And then apply the multi-sub material to the, uh, the individual cables here with A. And what we should end up with then is the ability to control those um, in order. Now, it looks like my array isn't picking up. Let me just check that. Looks like it be, wanted to be one to three for some reason. There we go. That seemed to work. Um, one to three then it, uh, under ordered. And there you go. We've got cables um, working. Now we're going to have to go back and change all of these because each one has got the uh, separate array modifier on it. I could probably have had that instance across all of them and it would have worked perfectly well, but we can update that very quickly. I also have these two here and uh, you know often these are just black so you know why don't I just take this black material and apply it to them and we'll have black ones. Now we can go about controlling the amount of shine on them through the shader and everything and it'll probably look just fine. You know again we'd have to sort of determine how close we're going to get to it and how much of a problem that's going to be but all those wires in the back now I and mean, they're going to look perfectly fine in this case. So next we'll get into doing some of the amp head and unwrapping and packing into the space. We'll take a look at how these knobs have been done and fast ways of going about, um, you know, just saving yourself time so that you're not rethinking things all the time.